my name is Brian Knopper. Uh, call, sign, call sign is Topper, and uh, or nickname, I guess. I'm sorry, I was in the military for so many years, I had a call sign. But, uh, yeah, nickname is Topper, after uh, Topper Harley, if you guys remember that old movie from the from the 90s. Um, I was in police class number nine, and uh, I was thinking about that. That's 1992, I believe it was, uh, 23 years ago, and I, I, I couldn't believe it when I, I thought about that today, how long ago it was, and uh, it's amazing how quickly the time goes. So as a good engineer, of course, I got my calculator out and confirmed, yeah, it's 23 years, so hard to believe. But I graduated in 1996, uh, uh, an electrical engineering degree, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't like it. I didn't like electrical engineering. It wasn't my choice. Um, I, uh, my whole goal coming out of college, uh, or going to college actually, was so I could get a, uh, a pilot slot coming out of ROTC and fly jets for the Air Force. And uh, so I wanted to do mechanical engineering, aerospace option, or aerospace concentration. Air Force said, hey, here you go. Uh, electrical engineering will pay for it if you do it. I figured, what's the, what's the difference? Let me do it. And... Uh, Anyway, if uh, any of you guys are electrical engineers, I, my condolences to you, and uh, it's impressive. But I did get out of there, uh, graduated, got my uh, commission, and went on to, uh, to fly jets with the Air Force. Uh, that was my first uh, job really out of uh, college, 1996. I graduated, went into uh, pilot training, and uh, for the next 10, 11 years, I flew uh, numerous jets for the Air Force. I was an instructor pilot, and... Uh, and just was having the time of my life. I met my, my beautiful wife uh, traveling through Oklahoma City, Ashley. Uh, so I met her and uh, drug her around the world with me. And then in uh, 2007, life kind of threw me a little curveball, and I got medically disqualified from flying. And, uh, you know, long story short, I got diagnosed with uh, migraine headaches, which, unbeknownst to me, was the kiss of death for a pilot uh, in the Air Force. So... Uh, Anyway, I was separated in, in 07, and uh, I was really forced to, to reinvent myself and my career uh, at the age of, gosh, what was I, 30, 34, or 35 years old. So it was uh, quite a curveball, and I wasn't expecting that. So I kind of saw the writing on the wall. Uh, I, I did fight that disqualification for about two years, and in that meantime, I went and got my, uh, my MBA degree. Uh, essentially reinventing myself and finding a new career. In, in 2008, so basically in 2007, I got out of the Air Force, 2008, um, there was about a year there, obviously. I kind of took some, took some time off and looked for the perfect job and, uh, and just kind of thought about what I wanted to do. And uh, found this job in Tulsa, Oklahoma, of all places, uh, which happened to be close to where my wife's family was from. So it was, it was good for us. And uh, so I get into this job. It's in the oil and gas industry. You know, I, uh, it was kind of a perfect combination of uh, putting my MBA, I thought, putting my MBA skills to work because it's somewhat of a sales position and, uh, uh, and, and then engineering, which I hadn't done. And, you know, I got out of college in 96, so it was 10, uh, 11 years I hadn't really thought about engineering. And, um, to be honest, I didn't think about engineering a whole lot in my senior year while I was there. But um, so I get this job, and uh, you know, it's it's a great job. But I it didn't take long before I realized that this isn't what I wanted to do. Uh, it I was having some I, I don't want to say uh, I was having a lot of second thoughts about it because I come from this military background where I'm I'm leading. I have a a flight of you know 100, 100 people that I'm leading uh, or more, and and flying flying these jets full of people that, that are looking at me as their leader, and I get into this position, I have nobody working for me. I'm essentially at the top of the structure because I'm reporting directly to the president of the company, so I have no advancement opportunities, um, and that was really hard for me because I was I'm one of those guys that was always constantly. Uh, are constantly just trying to uh, find out what my next promotion is, how I can get to the next level. And in this job, I didn't have that opportunity. There's, there was really no advancement opportunities, and, uh, and I didn't have the leadership opportunities that I wanted either. So, But I, I, I went in there with the attitude, hey, I'm just going to kick ass. I'm going to be the best uh, sales engineer that this company has. And, uh, and I went in there, and I did, did just that. I just started uh, yeah, doing really well. And... Uh, but there was still that something that was missing there, and uh, 
anyway, I stumbled into this health and fitness uh, thing. I, I, I got a little out of shape during that time because, you know, I was a little bit depressed. I was eating. I wasn't working out. But I found the found P90X. And I know a lot of you guys have probably done that or seen it. You know, it's kind of old school now. But uh, so I started doing that, and it really did change my life from a physical standpoint. And then I started uh, started getting into the personal development to, uh, to strengthen my mind. And so I was working mind and body, and then um, I did discover that there was a business opportunity with that, and I, t- I took advantage of that. And it was just, it was so awesome because it allowed me the ability to, uh, to take control of those areas of my life that I was missing in my current career, you know, helping other people, leading other people, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So anyway, I did that. I'm still doing that. It's started out as a hobby. It's now turned into a essentially a full-time residual income that I uh, uh, I just just really love. And that, uh, to be honest, I think that's what saved my engineering career because otherwise I would have, would have moved on by now. But uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, so hobbies, um, faith. You know, I I love the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, and I, I look to Him for strength and uh, and uh, it and guidance every day uh, with my family and uh, and of course fitness is a is a hobby and helping other people I love the outdoors and uh, I'm currently living in Tulsa Oklahoma there's not a whole lot of outdoor stuff but uh, I'm blessed that in about three weeks I'm moving to Colorado so I'll be out there near brother uh, brother Nadeau uh, near the Denver area so looking forward to that <coughs> And then personal development, that has really become a passion for me that I hope, if, if anything, you take out of this briefing, I'm hoping that you, uh, uh, you take out of it the importance of investing in yourself, investing in personal development. We will talk a little bit about that here in the, uh, in the coming slides. So, <clears throat> so, like I said, my wife, Matt, uh, Ashley, uh, we got married in 2001. We have a 10-year-old son. Uh, his name is Coleman. And, uh, and my wife is one of my mentors. And I, I really encourage you to find mentors in all areas of your life, and uh, especially in the areas where you're the weakest. And uh, my wife is, is really my spiritual rock. And uh, so I, I look to her for that, that kind of guidance. And, uh, you know, she keeps me grounded and... Uh, Helps me uh, keep my priorities in line and, uh, and gives me strength. So the other three guys there, you may have heard of their names. Um, if not, I, I hope you become familiar with them. Uh, Jim Rohn, uh, John Maxwell, and Darren Hardy. Those are just three. They're actually authors and uh, personal development gurus that I started plugging into um, via reading their books, audio books, and conferences, and uh and I actually uh, have an opportunity now that I'm working with John Maxwell for an entire year, once a month, to get to, uh, to speak with him on the phone for, uh, for a conference call. So, um, so dig into those, uh, some of the audio books that those guys have available and, uh, and learn from them. Okay, if we go to the next slide, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power through some of this stuff. Um, rather than go over, you know, individual... You know, specifics of, of, of my career, which I don't think you'll get a whole lot of benefit from. I kind of just summarized some things that I have done, I haven't done, uh, things I wish I had done, or that i you know seen other people do or not do. Okay? So if we're on that don't slide there, um, the first one, one of the most important ones there is don't get complacent or lazy. And what I mean by that is, is don't fall into a comfort zone. Um, where you're just you're just like everybody else. Essentially, you're you're happy where you are. You're content because um, it, it really stunts your personal growth. You know, keep keep pushing yourself. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. Ninety percent of the population is going to be in that comfort zone, and they're going to be um, you know they're going to be just surviving. They're going to be leading a mo- mediocre life. They're going to be getting by. Um, their life's going to be somewhat driven by fear. Um, so all the good things are going to happen when you get out of that zone, comfort zone, like you know, fulfillment, prosperity, all that. Uh, um, the good things in life really happen when you step out of that. And uh, and actually write that down. Write down comfort zone and then Google. Just go 
Google that and then go to the images, you're going to find a cool image out there. Uh, it's a, you may have seen it. It's a circle, and it says comfort zone in the middle. It's got all these terms on the inside, and then it's got a whole bunch of great terms on the outside. Um, so that has been a big help for me, honestly. I, I printed it out years ago, and I put it on my desk, and I, I look at it all the time, and every time I'm afraid to do something, I'll look at that, and that just gives me a little confidence to, uh, to, to step outside and, uh, and, um, and push myself a little bit farther. And likewise, number two there, don't spend time with people who are complacent or lazy. That's the same thing. You know, you're going to be surrounded by people mostly, uh, most of the day, most of your life. And uh, there's a saying, I don't remember who said it, but your, your income is the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And, uh, and that's really true. Uh, it's really true. So choose those people widely. You know, if you're hanging out with guys that are, you know, going to the EDC or whatever that AZ conference carnival thing is out in Vegas all the time, you're partying, and you, you, you're not, I mean, that's fun. Yeah, I'm sure that's fun. I've never been there. But, but as an example, you want to find people that you're going to spend the most time with who are going places where, or who are at places where you want to go, okay? So they're going to help you get there. And if you hang out with people who are where you've already been or where you don't want to go, they're going to get you there as well, and, uh, and that's not what you want to happen. So, um, Number three, don't let anyone else determine your career path. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is similar to stepping outside your comfort zone. If you want something, go out there and get it. You know, Talk to your, your supervisor, your manager, your... Uh, the CEO, whatever, tell them what you want. Tell them what you're looking for out of this career and then develop actionable steps to, to get there and to get it done. Uh, a boss likes nothing more than to see a determined employee who's going to do whatever he can to uh, improve his career and step out um, and step ahead of the pack. So, and likewise, don't let somebody else determine your financial independence. Um, or your lack of financial independence, okay? It's no secret that you're not going to have a great retirement plan coming out of a company nowadays. It, does, it just doesn't happen. Those things are gone. Um, so obviously you got the 401Ks, the IRAs, and I know I listened to Donnie's call. I uh, had it last month, I guess, so, and he, he touched on this a little bit. Um, and those are great, great ways to start but I would encourage you to develop multiple income streams as well. Um, you know, especially when you're young, if you have have an idea or a passion, start try to start your own small little business. And and even if it's not generating huge profits, keep growing it. And, and maybe you you know you'll get some profits, you'll get some income. Um, just so you have something else to fall back on. You know, maybe uh, real estate or you know rental property, something like that. Just keep thinking outside the box because. You know, financial security is gone in a lot of jobs today. You could have a great job, and then the next day it's gone, and you're, uh, you know, you're kicked, kicked to the curb. So uh, develop some multiple streams of income and think about it and, and, and uh, have options out there is what I'm saying. Um, don't pass up an opportunity. I'm on number five. Don't pass up an opportunity to learn and to lead in the position that you are currently in. Even if you don't like the job that you're in, if you... you think you deserve a better position or you deserve more pay, don't sit back and think, well, I'll do a better job when I, uh, you know, when I get more pay or, or when I get a better position because that's, that's backwards thinking. If you don't like it, still do the best that you can, learn everything that you can from that position, lead people, show people that you, uh, that you have passion and that you are willing to do, do whatever it takes uh, to get the job done and exceed. And I guarantee you it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for you. <clears throat> don't sit in the back of the room and just exist. I see this all the time, and I was one of those guys for, for a long time. I got out of college. I got out of, uh, you know, pilot training. I was so burnt out. I just wanted to chill out, right? I wanted to not be the center of attention. I wanted to just sit in the back and and just maybe absorb whatever I could and uh, stay out of the spotlight. Um, but it wasn't, didn't take long before I realized that I was, uh, I was stunting my growth there. I was, I was going to fall behind if I kept doing that. You know, you're not the, the cool kid sitting in the back of the bus anymore. You got to get there, get, 
get to the front of the room, get involved, get noticed, and, uh, and be effective. Make a name for yourself. Um, number seven, Donnie touched on this also. Don't trash your image on social media. You know, keep it clean and classy out there, guys. I've never heard uh, an employer say, hey, look, this guy on Facebook, he's cussing, he's, he's partying, all that. Let's hire him. We need another guy like that on our team. That doesn't happen. You know, they're looking for, for people who are motivational out there or, or just quiet on social media. I mean, that, that's my day. I'm not a huge social media guy. I get on there a little bit, but, uh, uh, but I do see things out there that uh, I think people are going to regret in the long run. So just be careful and be classy out there, especially as a fraternity guy. You know, we've had so much bad publicity, and that, that seems to be all that fraternities get on the national news is bad publicity. Um, and we just had that here in Oklahoma, and it was just it was nauseating to see that. So, so keep it clean and show that uh, what fraternities are really about. Um, I don't think a college degree is going to make you successful. Obviously, it's going to get your foot in the door. It's going to be great for your resume. You guys are all brilliant guys. I mean, you're graduating from RIT, so you've got a lot going for you. Um, but when you get into a new job, obviously, your performance and your attitude is what's going to really set you apart. It's gonna, that's what's going to make you successful. The, career, or the uh, college degree is just going to get your foot in the door. So, uh, uh, for example, I work with a guy, one of the best guys in our company, never even graduated from college. He's just been doing this job since he, I don't know, since he got out of high school. Essentially, he got hired, and he's one of the best guys in there, and he's worked his way out, and he's done a, a fantastic job um, because of his performance and his attitude. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, don't acquire too many liabilities. Now, why would I say that? I mean, what I mean is to stay out of debt. Don't, don't uh, make stupid financial decisions um, because that, that really drags you down. I see that limiting people's opportunities. You know, if these people have, I mean, if you get out there and you have any kind of entrepreneurial s spirit and you want to do something, you want to start your own company, if you're swimming in debt because you're driving a, Little sports car that you got up to your, you know, your first job. You're making fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars a year, and you're spending it on uh, on stupid stuff. You know, you're not going to have any disposable income that you can use to invest. Um, so keep yourself out of debt. And I made those mistakes, right? I got out of college and I bought a well back then it was a cool sports car, Mitsubishi Eclipse GT. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Um, but I regret that now because I think of, you know, I think of all the money that I spent on that on that thing, and uh, as cool as it was, uh, I could have used that money for for a lot more important things. Uh, and don't let fear stand in your way. This kind of piggybacks on the get out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, as you're young and you're getting out of college, uh, one of the regrets that I have is that I didn't act on. Uh, on my entrepreneurial spirit, I didn't uh, take take risks um, because I was completely focused on you know going to fly jets, which was was really cool. But um, as I look back on it, and as I look at my life now, it's more difficult to make these uh, take these risks when you have a family, when you have a wife and a son, and and medical uh, insurance that you're depending on. You know, so it's it's really hard. To, it's harder to make uh, any kind of risk, uh, risky moves or uh, ventures like that. So um, just think about that. And, and if, if you do have ambitions like that, consider uh, looking into it at, uh, at this age. Um, okay, if we could flip over to the next slide there, the, the do slide. Um, here it is. Okay. Uh, number one, network, and that's what we're doing here, right? You're, you're building and, and maintaining relationships, you know, doing it with your alumni, but do it with everybody that you meet. Um, you know, if you meet somebody, write their name down, their number, and think of a reason to get in touch with them, to contact them. Maybe you have a question. People love it when you call them and ask them questions or you're interested in their life, um, but you never know where a connection is going to lead you. Um, 
So anyway, that kind of speaks for itself. And, and this is that's why I really love this mentor program because you're making connections with, with brothers all over the, uh, the world, essentially. Um, and, uh, and it's going to open up opportunities for you. Uh, number two, learn everything you can from everyone you meet in every position you are in. Um, you know, it could be good things or bad things. Everybody that you meet, you know, every job that you take, you're going to learn good things, you're going to learn bad things. Um, those are all lessons, you know. Um, you're going to make mistakes, learn from those, and, uh, and and take lots of notes. Make a journal. It sounds kind of corny, but take a journal and uh, for every year just fill that thing up. You know, buy a blank book and fill it up with knowledge of little things that you learn, everyone you meet and whatever you meet from that person, then to review it periodically. Uh, and they'll also help you keep in touch with those people, right? Um, you, you meet somebody and uh, you write down, you learn a little bit about their family, and next time you call and talk to them, you ask them about their family by name, they're going to be impressed. I will tell you, they will be impressed that you remember that, and they're going to remember you, and that's going to get you places. All right, number three, focus on leading and helping other people achieve their goals. Essentially doing things with no expectation of anything in return. Um, if you see somebody is struggling in your job or in their job, help them out. You know, don't expect to get rewarded for it or recognition for it. Um, but you're going to start to develop your own personal brand, and we'll talk about that later, but how people view you, that's what you're going to learn, and, and that's, or that's, that's uh, what you're going to develop. When you start helping other people, you're going to become known as that guy, and, and people are going to respect you, and again, that's going to get you places. Um, and be interesting to other people, and what I mean by that is not, um, not talking about yourself, but really asking about them. When you're at a networking event, people love it. When They love to talk about themselves. So just keep asking about them, asking them questions. You don't really have to talk a whole lot about yourself, but at the end of that conversation, those people are going to remember you, and they're going to think, man, that guy was really interesting to talk to. And, and bottom line is you really didn't say a whole lot. You just, uh, you just ask questions, and they're going to remember you, and that's a great uh, way to, to develop a relationship and, uh, and maintain a relationship with those people. Um, number five, look sharp, be mature, and exude confidence, but not arrogance. Um, should go without saying, you know, I'm sure you go to a job interview, you're going to be looking sharp. You're going to be wearing your suit and tie. Um, but let that, let that go beyond your job interview. Start holding your head high if you're not already. I'm sure you guys have a lot of confidence already. But... Um, you're at the point now where you really need to be, uh, I don't want to say clean cut and mature, but you want to be, yeah, essentially clean cut and mature if you want to start uh, developing relationships with people who have been successful because the majority of people are like that that have been successful. So um, keep that in mind, just, uh, just my opinion there. Uh, number six, uh, develop your personal brand and uh, become valuable to your team. Touched on that a little bit already. That's how people are going to perceive you. You want to be known as the go-to guy, uh, people that can trust you and that they respect you. Um, and so, yeah, develop your brand, how, how people are going to perceive you. Um, number seven, uh, commit to personal development every day. I like to commit to le reading at least ten pages from a book every day, and then I, I do what's called Drive Time University. Uh, every time I get in my truck and, and head down the road, I have some kind of audio book in there that I'm going to learn from. And, uh, you know, I got every day I have a 25, 30-minute commute, so that's an hour a day that I'm essentially learning from some kind of a guru and just absorbing it. And there's books that I've listened to dozens and dozens of times. And, uh, and and my son, he's 10 years old, and he essentially has some of those books memorized himself, and it's pretty cool to see how impactful they have been on him and uh, and how he really absorbs that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, commit to that every day, and, and uh, that will be very helpful. All right, I'm going to 
pick up the pace here. I know been been on for quite a while. Uh, portray a, a positive attitude and outlook. You know, don't be the doom and gloom guy, the Debbie Downer. Things aren't going your way. Um, you know, recognize what the problem is and propose a solution and uh, and, and actionable steps to improve that. Don't sit around and sulk about it or spread the doom and gloom to everybody else. This job sucks, or I can't wait to get out of here. You know, jumping out of the jumping out of your seat and leaving at, uh, at 5 o'clock on the dot. Um, do what it takes. Keep a positive attitude, positive outlook. You know, they're kind of the half class full uh, attitude. Uh, number nine, keep your priorities straight. And what I mean by that is um, you need to set them. I mean, you need to determine what your priorities are, is it your faith, your family, your job. Um, set, up, set those priorities up and stick to it. You know, stick you know, for example, I have a priorities with my family, big ones, and I have to go out and play basketball with my son here. And well, ten minutes ago, actually, but um, so that's that's one of my priorities. And I told him, hey, I'm going to be out there uh, with you, and uh, he is my priority. And you need to make sure that uh, that your family, your friends, and your employer knows where they fit into your priorities. Uh, and number ten, uh, discover your passion and act on it. You know, whatever you whatever you love to do. Follow that passion. Do it, um, and uh, you know. It, somebody somebody said, if you if you do what you love you, as a career, you'll never work a day in your life, and that's that's really true. And uh, I wish I could say that I don't love my engineering job. I'm not going to say that I do. Um, I do love the other income streams that I have developed, and, and those have been very successful because I have a, a strong passion for those and. Uh, um, so find what your passion is about and, and follow that course uh, and stick to it and, and act on it. Okay, and uh, number 11, the last one is kind of the bonus one, set goals and aggressively pursue them. And I cannot stress this enough. Write down your goals. Find out what you want to do. Have a, uh, you know, a, a one-week plan, a, a, a five-month or a six-month plan, a year plan, five-year plan, whatever. Write down those goals, set a timeline for those goals, and set down the actionable steps that you're going to take to get there. Um, there there's another saying, this is a goal without a deadline is just a dream. That's really true. You can say that you want to do this and you want to do that, but if you don't have it written down, if you don't have a time timeline for it, when you're going to get it done, it's really just a dream. And uh, uh, you're not... Uh, <coughs> You know, you're likely not going to hit that goal if you don't have a, uh, have a good plan to do it. And Donnie talked about that, a great example of that. He said he wanted to have $401,000 in his 401K on his 40, 40th birthday or 40 years in one month or something like that. You know, that doesn't just happen overnight. That was a long-term plan. He set steps to make it happen and made it happen. So anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I know we've been on here for quite a while, but... Uh, if you guys have any questions, throw them at me. I'd be more than happy to happy to entertain them. Um, okay, okay. How do you how do you know um, when you're getting too far out of your comfort zone, where it's becoming awkward or unnatural. or unnatural for you? How do you avoid, how do you avoid uh, that well, feeling? Well, I mean, that, that's a circumstance, I, I guess. Uh, too far out of your comfort zone. I don't know. Is there such a thing? I mean, it, it all depends on what you're going for, what you're striving for. I think you will know. I mean, you guys are all smart enough guys that you know if you continue on that route, if if you're doing something that is detrimental to your career or your your health or your family or something like that, um, I would say that would be a, a you know a specific to, to what you're doing uh, and, and kind of a gut feel, I guess. Or perhaps somebody is telling you. Uh, somebody who you respect and somebody who knows better is telling you, hey, listen, pal, I appreciate your excitement. I appreciate your passion. Um, you, you may need to dial it back because this is the, what's going to happen, and these are the consequences if you keep doing that, and, and that will let you make a, uh, a better decision on whether you need to keep going or dial it down a little bit. Uh, what was one thing that you enjoyed about being in the Air Force and one thing that you did not enjoy about being in the Air Force? Um, yeah, so... I mean, there are lots of things that I enjoyed about it. Just the people, first of all, and the camaraderie. It's, it was kind of an extension of the fraternity, you know, because the, 
just like pledging, you know, all, all the pilots go through pilot training, and that is just gruesome. I mean, not gruesome, grueling. <laughs> it's very difficult to get through that, and, and you really, really bond. I mean, it's a full year's worth of being with everybody for 12 hours a day minimum and then studying, you know, another, you know, five, six hours uh, every day. So, yeah, the, the relationships that you built and then the, the <clears throat> opportunities to lead were just phenomenal. I loved it. I loved that. And then the the clear the clear way that or the clear opportunities that you have to um, advance, advance in rank or get your promotion. You know that you can keep going as high as you want, and, and it's up to you. The sky's the limit uh, on how high you can go. Um, things that I didn't like about it. Uh, I mean, it's it's government agency, so there's a lot of bureaucracy and there's a lot of you know, budgets, you know, everything comes down to, not everything, but a lot of things will come down to money or um, and sometimes opportunities are squelched on you because of political concerns. Um, and then, of course, being away from home a, a lot. And, and as a pilot, I was traveling a lot. I would go away for five, six months out to Saudi Arabia or Iraq and and leaving, uh, you know, a wife, uh, and I didn't have kids at the time, but wife and kids, that's, that's very difficult, and that's probably the worst part, I think, about, uh, about the military is leaving your family. What is your greatest moment in fly size at undergrad? The greatest moment of the fly size, well, I mean, I would say, and a lot of people probably say this, is pledging was... Whoosh, Pledging was really awesome. I mean, it was my first real bonding experience with guys that I really liked while I was in college. Um, you know, there's all that time that you spend together, the experiences, and pledging was just really, really awesome, and, and the relationships that I built uh, with guys that we still keep in contact with today, um, and those memories. And, and like I said, engineering to me was very difficult. I struggled. Um, I still came out of there with a pretty decent GPA, but the only thing that I can say that I really enjoyed about about college was was the fraternity, and that was my outlet, man. If I, I got out of the library, I could just hang out with the guys in general. Uh, I looked forward to weekends and Nick Tahoe's runs and all that kind of stuff. It's just that those are very vivid memories that never go away. Um, so, so we'll say Nick Tahoe's is my favorite thing. <laughs> All right. What was your favorite recruitment event back in the day, and what major events did you guys have back in the day besides Mud Tug? <clears throat> oh, my favorite recruitment event in Five Side? Yeah. Um, gosh. Uh, you know, I think, I don't know if it was actually a recruitment event, uh, but flag football to me was, it was a huge that that and I'm going to take back my last statement. Flag football was was probably the uh, the favorite uh, activity that we did in Five Side uh, until, of course, I collapsed my lung and broke my ribs. Um, but yeah, that was that was a bad day. But I still have the scars from that hemothorax when I went into surgery to correct that. Uh, but it was flag football was such a big deal, and I hope it still is. Uh, that I think that that was a great recruitment event because so many people would come to those games and they would see how awesome Five Side was and see Ken Way zipping touchdown after touchdown and Felix just dancing to the end zone, all that kind of stuff. People wanted to be with Five Side because we were we were cool like that. But uh, that's all that's all I can remember right now, actually, for the recruitment events. What books would you recommend for personal development? for personal development? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's lots lots of them. So I would say for John Maxwell, one I would probably start with would be uh, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Uh, that's a really, really good one. Um, Darren Hardy, uh, The Compound Effect. Um, that is really awesome. That's one of those audiobooks that I literally have listened to probably probably 20 times. Um, there's another book called The Slight Edge by uh, Olson. I want to say Greg Olson, but the slight hedge 
Yeah, get that one. Um, Think and Grow Rich is another classic, Napoleon Hill. That's a really good one, and it's, it's not so much about, you know, getting wealthy, but it's about getting rich in your life and uh, just getting you to think. Uh, and then one more, Think, uh, uh, no, The Magic of Thinking Big, another classic. Uh, all those, if you start with those books, you're just going to be led to, to other ones uh, that are that are great. And then get Success Magazine. Uh, Darren Hardy, one of my mentors there, uh, he's, uh, he's the publisher of Success Magazine. You get that, you're going to get it every month with all your CDs, and it's going to have a list of, of great books to, to, to read and to learn. And there's so many articles and really successful people that they talk about in there. So it's just full of great stuff. All right. I think that's it. All right. Thanks, Brian. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Good luck to you.